Welcome to the Tattoo Weekly. We are live. Lauren, you want to uh, take it away on location? What's, yes. What's up, everybody? We are live from the Tattoo Collectors Expo. I'm Lauren Gregory. Um, I spent a really great weekend down in Texas, but I first want to say welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, a place for artists, collectors, and the curious to join in live events just like these um, to get better and better your skill set. So if you're unfamiliar with the community, again, you can find us at community.reinventingthetattoo.com or in your app store. Um, also, you're watching the Tattoo Weekly with myself, Gabe Ripley, and Jake Meeks. And you can find us, maybe you're beaming in from YouTube or listening to the podcast or on Facebook. So thank you to everybody who is joining. Of course, we want to say thank you to some of our sponsors. Uh, we've got World Tattoo Events. Uh, raw pigments, inkjet stencils, which providing stencils from your mobile or home, um, you know, saving a lot of times, uh, artists' hands, all that stuff. So definitely thank you to them. We also want to say thank you to DLize Pro, known internationally as Dermalize Pro, for supporting our community. And we have Jake Meeks of our affiliate Fireside Tattoo Network, EcoFriendlyTattooSupplies.com, and Amy from the Apprenticeship Diaries. So thank you to everybody tuning in. A little bit about where I'm at. I'm at the Tattoo Collectors Expo put on by Worldwide Inc. Magazine. There was um, uh, hundreds of booths, a lot of great feedback, a lot of people walking through the door, and uh, the contests were run much differently than anything I've seen. So we'll talk about that a little bit. I do want to start off showing you the best of show from this, uh, uh, from the show. We've actually got our artist, uh, George, from Inkology uh, Tattoo Studio in Manhattan, who was tattooing with us. He put in 23 hours on this piece. And um, I hope you guys can see it all right. We're gonna pull them over here in just a minute. All right. So you might not be able to hear us. Why don't you take okay. a seat? Right, yep. um, you'll be able to see how it's looking. This is, hey guys. you wanna introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Chris Razaki, and I uh, just recently got a tattoo from Jorge Lane. Yeah. Uh, here at the expo. Awesome, so you might need to stand up a little sure. bit to show everybody, um, like I said, 23 hours in on this design. He started oh, on the yeah. top. He started on the top. Sweet. Yesterday on Friday. Hell yeah. Beautiful. 13 Beautiful. hours for this side. That was 13 hours on the top. Mm. And on the show inside, yep. Oh yeah. That looks nice. great. Uh, 10 hours on that inside. Yeah, yeah about nine, 10 hours on that side. Yeah. Awesome. Nice, yeah. And, can and, you see that forearm again on the inside? Sure. So that we can see it. Sure. Yeah. yeah, take your time and go slow. He says, take your time and go slow. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need to back up a little bit, though, because it's hot on the light. Uh, back up a little bit. Yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, he, he showed up early, uh, 9 a.m. to start. You know, he really was focused entirely on the client. It wasn't about any type of award, but we were really stoked with what they what they gave. It, they had a a lot of entries, more than a hundred entries for just the black and gray. Wow. We won black yeah. and gray on the first day and then uh or the second day. And yep. then we won best of show. Yep. Awesome man. Congratulations. Yeah. So nice. It's, it's super yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Who, uh, it, and the, the artist was Jorge, what's his last name again? Uh, Lange. He's at Inkology, and he is a Brazilian artist, uh, just yeah. still in the black and gray. Uh, I have one yeah. more client with a healed sleeve that I'd like to show you guys. He flew in all the way from Boston to participate in the awards, uh, so that was a shout out to him. And um, Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, we're going to see if he'd like to show us off some of his work in just a minute. Um, so for this award, yeah. I thought it was cool, guys. They had $1,000 cash. He got a bishop wand. He got a ton of sullen gear. He got a sullen roller, um, all sorts of pied caps, of a suitcase full. It was. Wow. Uh, yeah, let's show off the awards too. The awards they had custom made, you guys. I thought it was cool because, um, you know, trophies are one thing, uh, but when you have something, a one off presentation, I thought that was really great to, to see. To yeah. See art, art, really, you know, in every facet. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know Gabe's talked about before one of the biggest challenges of holding events like these are figuring out how to what to do for awards. So it's always exciting. Oh, that's to uh, that's if you don't care about awards. <laughs> we go. We got some of the awards. All right. So we are going uh, nice. to show off what he got for the plaque. And this was yeah, on yeah. Friday. He had uh, best black and gray out of best more than 100. Yep. And this was yeah. the best of show. Best of show. Oh. Right here. 
I'm just glad everybody likes it. Just a little bit. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. Super cool. Glad everybody liked it. Uh, Super happy. I'm super excited. I know. I just can't wait for more. Are you going to get your the the other sleeve done? Yep. 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 Awesome. This was his first big tattoo. Yeah, first big tattoo, first long set, and uh, I just I can't wait for more. Just, how did uh, how did he does he want to tell the story about how we uh, found the artist and I'd love yeah let me um switch so he can hear and it's a pretty interesting story you guys he'd like to hear about how you found the okay, artist sure. yeah. um let me get the all right go ahead and uh, tell us tell us what you told me about how you found him yeah no problem uh so I was looking up tattoos one day and um, I decided to get on Instagram just like everybody does there's tons of pictures on Instagram for tattoos um I came across Jorge's page in 2018 and then uh just I started looking at his work I was super impressed he quickly became my favorite artist and then uh just happened to see a, a post on their story and they said that uh they were looking for somebody in Texas and I told them well I'm from Michigan but you know I'm willing to go there I'm willing to fly to Texas for a tattoo from you because I've, I've loved your work since 2018. Um I mean I followed him from when he was in Brazil and then uh, he went and did six months in uh, London, and then he eventually moved to New York. And I just thought, man, he's getting closer, he's getting closer. And then this was my opportunity. So I reached out, they reached out to me. I didn't believe it was true at the time. And then uh, they decided, they picked me, and next thing happened, I'm here. And we're winning awards with exactly. tattoos. So I just hope for more. Yeah, it's so cool. It was man. pretty cool to, to see something. Um, and to make it happen it wasn't just like he booked an appointment this was a, a cross-country trek yeah yeah and so was it jorge's concept or, or how did the planning of the actual tattoo yeah. come about yeah so it was all jorge's concept and he uh he he showed me the picture he's like is this something that you'd be interested in and i said absolutely i trust you 100 percent. let's do it and then nice. the, we did the one on the first day and then uh decided all right we're going to do a second one for see if we can incorporate more and we did yeah. Congratulations. It's really, really beautiful. Looks like it's looks like it's going to heal perfectly because it's like it, no irritation. It looks like butter already. So you it's, probably don't have much to, to worry about. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Super cool. Awesome. And if, uh, if you could just let us know who the artist is one more time and then maybe give us one more show off. There's more people that have just joined us. So uh... absolutely. Yep. Uh, Jorge Lange is my uh, tattoo artist. Yep, and you can find him at L-A-N-G-E underscore tattoo or at Inkology Art Gallery or featured on Raw Pigments. Yep. Oh, uh, Donald's shop. Yeah, he works with Donald. Oh, um, awesome. To see it again. Absolutely, you... absolutely. Yep. Yes. All right, so here we go. Again, this was completed over the course of 23 hours. 23 hours. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Just move so, it real so slow. Nice. Yeah. Thomas says, way to go, brother. Yeah. His creativity is amazing. Yeah, really, really, really beautiful. Nice. I mean, full, full value range. It's so soft, but it's powerful. It reads really, really clearly. Uh, you know, the major, the big shapes are super crisp and clean. The negatives are nice. The uh, balance, it's really, really well done. All the different types of contrast. Yeah, yeah. Tells a bit of a story. You're definitely interested in what the what's going on. Right. Uh, Burn Something Candles uh, was beaming in from Maryland. Steve Johns from Huntington Beach, California. They're on the uh, Reinventing yes. YouTube channel. Thanks for beaming in. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, Miss Ross Sauce is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Cool, man. Well, thanks for sharing it with us. It's really, really nice. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, who, so who else did uh, you get to catch up with, Lauren? Uh, I saw a bunch of different artists, um, a lot that I hadn't seen in a very long time. Of course, Alonzo Gonzalez is putting this on along with Art Cantu Jr. at World Wide Ink Magazine. I do want to show off a healed sleeve, guys, that I am really super impressed. Um, he flew in all the way from Boston, you guys. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself and show off some of uh, your work and tell us a little bit about why you're in Texas from Boston? Um, Derek Rogers, I'm from Boston. So George contacted me and wanted to do, we did a sleeve last year and wanted to introduce it to the professor sleeve. So I agreed to come out there and show off his work. That is awesome. Do you mind showing uh, our audience um, what yeah. you have? So I hope you guys can see oh, this yeah. light. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, 
how uh, how old is this piece? How old is this piece? Uh, it's a year old about now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, nice. it looks great. Finished it about August time frame of last year. Yeah, yeah it settled in perfectly. You're uh, you're off camera now, though. Just a, kinda... Take one step back. There you go. There you go. Yeah, sweet. And, the whole yeah, back looks rose. great too. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. Settled in. Settled in beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. And and man, that and good for you for making that trip down from Boston to just to enter a competition for your artist, man. That's uh that's like an A plus client. Way way to go. I mean, George, he's a great guy. I mean, so yeah. honestly, I can't catch anyone else better than the world. But... Yeah, yeah. And what, what's his last name, George? Who? Lange. Lange. Oh, oh, horse. Oh, same same artist. Okay. Yep, yeah, same yeah. Sorry, I yeah, he called him George, and I heard the other guy said Jorge, so I had I wasn't I was thinking two different people. Yep, yeah, he yeah. Actually, he's from Brazil, so he speaks oh. Portuguese. So we're um, he's definitely being proactive and learning English and communicating with his clients. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, man, they're, they're both they're both beautiful, and uh, uh, that's great that you have two pieces, a fresh one, and they settled in from the same artist on the same show. Way to go, good job, Lauren. That's great. Oh. <laughs> nice, uh, Alexander Bart. Bartoski says, "Yee, I'm from Europe, and it's three o'clock in the morning." Yeah. <laughs> ah, all right. <laughs> well, thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, beautiful piece, man. Congratulations on that. So nice. All right. So yeah, I uh, did see some other artists that I was excited about. Alonzo Gonzalez, he puts it on from the Black Rose Studio. Uh, Kelly Gromley, I saw. Go. Uh, Kelly's great. Incredible. Um, you guys, I did have about 15 minutes to sit down with Yalzi. Um, we will probably be sharing that next week. And what a great person. What a great guy to talk to. Always enlightening. Um, no dates for the PR tattoo convention yet. So that's, that is still um, happening, but definitely not, not this year. Not this year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably, probably a safe move. Cause that, that show is normally in like November, December anyways. Right. So it would be coming up pretty closely. Or pretty soon yeah and then the last thing i wanted to share with you guys before we kick off your topics is i'd like to hear from ricardo um him and i and uh, uh jorge as well we all got free laser treatment at this uh convention which was so uh, cool they offered free laser not to only to artists but everybody uh, which was really unique it was a, a fun experience so you won't be able to see it yet uh oh. but I, did get, I got my arm blasted uh, nice Right. Our yeah, you can't really see it. It's under plastic right now. Yep. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, getting this tattoo up here from Guy. Uh, mm -hmm. I, oh, yeah. The whole sleeve. And the next thing I know, he's like, yeah, you want to definitely get that stuff. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get down to your knuckles if there's all that shit in the way. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I can't wait for it, too, man. It's like going to be amazing. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh did you guys both just get black work um, lasered or is it color work, all, all black? I actually had a realistic, like a leopard, so to speak, but there was a lot of negative space. So um, it's pretty much gone. It was all with like a gray wash. So um, oh, okay. I think this is how that turns out for sure. Yeah. And Ricardo, yours was all black work or all black and gray? Yeah, black and gray. I have some color up here on the top of my forearm. You can see like some greens and stuff like that and blues. And yeah. I mean, they brought with them today is set up more for just the black work and the shade. Yeah, that's that's what I was good. That's what I was curious about. If they were traveling with lasers that could handle all color, if they were just dealing with a limited uh I whatever. Believe what he said when we first spoke to him um, that they weren't gonna do the blues. Right. Um yeah. luckily for us that didn't affect us. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Man, that's good. How, how sorry, go okay. ahead. Yeah, how 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 was it uh pain-wise? It goes pretty fast, not too painful. Uh, or... Yeah, the best. <laughs> that I heard and that I would probably repeat it feels almost like uh, bacon grease little zaps of bacon uh, yeah. um, but it goes by so fast um, if you're going to talk to the person doing it you have a conversation it will go by much quicker um, but I was tattooed yesterday as well um, I got a it, it's it's dermed up right now but I got a traditional um, piece rosy dagger oh, um, nice. it works. who did it uh, Cody Hennings, uh, uh, an amazing artist, guys. I would recommend looking him up. He flew through this, and we're trying to, you know, nitpick a, 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 like exactly where he got his speed from. But I would probably say it boils down to efficiency. Yeah, Very yeah. efficient. Station is efficient. Everything is perfect, and he doesn't really waste any time. Very deliberate. Yeah. Yeah. And nice. Which is cool. 
It look it looks great from the little bit that you can see under your sleeve or out of your sleeve. Yeah. Yeah, the co the color definitely pops. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Ricardo, did you uh yep. oh go ahead. Yeah. Uh did you tattoo at the event, Ricardo? Or were you yeah. I did. I did do one tattoo. Um I had uh for his wife. I uh, knew some people around here and she put out the feelers and somebody, you know, came in. I ended up doing a, a piece that I wanted to do and uh, I'll be posting those pictures. Soon. Nice. Cool. I know, man. He was very um, open to like three different designs that I had and it was the first time I was able to just tell somebody, you know, this is what I want to do and we're going to do this. And he was stoked about any one of them. So nice. Really cool. Really cool kid. He, uh, he does like photography and stuff like that. So I can brand about cameras and you know lighting and stuff like that. So overall, really great experience. Awesome. Well, yeah. good. good. How how big is the show? How many about how many booths do, or do you know? It's a uh, 360. We are at a really cool location, and I think sometimes you know when you go to a show and it's and it's in like a shitty location, it really changes the vibe. Uh, but there was a lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff open late, but we're right in uh, the eSports stadium. So across the street is where the Texas Rangers play. Uh, Six okay. Flags is across the street and all sorts of Ooh. sports stuff. But it's a it's a new spot. The eSports stadium is actually a, a video game. Mm -hmm. hub, I, I guess we took some photos. It's just unique and different, really easy to come in and out. Um, it looks I like enjoyed it. Yeah. It's big enough to, to house a couple of airplanes, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. pretty Pretty good size. So. Did, were there any like pro, any th weird protocols or anything like that? COVID COVID wise, they take te temperature or do any. Although really. I'm really really disappointed to I guess announce that the Ink Art Expo in um, Humboldt County has been canceled just last, uh -oh. month, and that was supposed to be at the end of the month. So I'm not sure what California is going to be doing if Golden State will be affected at all. Mm. But um, I guess we will wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all kind of up in the air, I guess. Yeah. It's uh, one of the reasons why we'll be beaming out everything for the uh, BYOB. Hey, Jason, yeah. you mind coming and saying hi yeah. real quick? Yeah, Guys, yeah, I want to yeah. introduce Jason. He uh, did all the awards. He's got gloves on, but... Uh, yeah, we can give them some gloves, but yeah, we would love to uh, introduce him. He spent a lot of time working on and making something super custom, and let's say hi to him. What's up, Jason? Hey, man. This is uh, Gabe and uh, Jake, and you are live on the Tattoo Weekly right now. I just want to say hey. for all that hard work you put into making those awards, and uh, yeah. Yeah, no problem. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I hadn't really done a whole lot like that. Um, mm -hmm. I've done a couple local shows, shows in Oklahoma city. Mm -hmm. Um, but we actually did a lot of the plaques and stuff this time. So. so how did you decide to do that large, uh, award that we just, the tall one that we just showed you guys? Um, the best of show, that was kind of something I, I just kind of came up with. We didn't really have a idea on where we were going to go with it. We, with the best of days, we did a we made a mold of an artist's hand, and she was holding a giant tattoo machine that we had wrapped up and basically dumped about two hundred dollars of liquid silicone to make a mold in a little trash can. And uh, I wanted to wanted to keep using it. Um, we had an idea where we were going with the uh, best of days. Um, and I just kind of wanted to beef it up a little bit as far as the height and the color. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously gold. Yeah. So, and I love that color. It goes great with the, with the texture that wooden stuff. So Absolutely. it just, it all blended in real well, you know? So yeah, I, I love actually, it. uh, that's actually the second one that I did. Okay. Um, I kind of messed up on the first one and it okay. didn't cure properly. So, um, Maybe next year, yeah, we can go with that idea that I had this year. So absolutely, um, but yeah, this shit was fun. Hell yeah! What is your um? What what's your background? Is it uh, mostly like casting or metal fabrication or what? What, what um, kind of work do you do? My background is I've I've just been around construction my whole life. Hmm. Um, I'm a trim carpenter, I guess by trade. I grew up in the construction industry. Um, 
I've been heavily involved with the tattoo community just in our state in, uh, pardon me, <clears throat> in Oklahoma City. Um, it wasn't actually legalized till 2006, mm -hmm. I believe. And it was right after my daughter was born. So I never had the opportunity to actually get an apprenticeship, but uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I don't think I would have ever found my epoxy art. So um, I make a lot of uh, workstations, tattoo stations. Um, whole rolling the roll base do the whole hydraulic lift on it um those are a lot of fun for me um the awards is something different um i had to do a lot of carving on the hands a little bit um just underneath just to get it cleaned up a little bit um add a little more detail this is something i've never really done before with the molds this is the first time we've actually i've actually made like a full mold of just about anything i made a couple skull molds and got the idea of how to uh how to work with it basically mm -hmm. so when uh alonzo gonzalez uh he's part owner of the expo him and i chatted man and it's kind of what we came up with so yeah super cool um, yeah. yeah but yeah man i don't have a whole lot of experience with it's mainly just flat pours um, and deep pours, kind of like your tables, I guess you would say, that everybody sees, the river tables. Mm -hmm. First time I saw those, man, I was just like, dude, those are so fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, like, not to knock on everybody, but everybody's fucking doing it now. Right. And uh, I don't know, man, I just kind of – I've I've sat on this idea for the work trays and workstations. Um, I got a – shit ton of them too like i just i want to keep doing them um and showing you guys what i can do um, yeah where do people where do you go to see them do you have a, a website or an it's a page where you can see your workstations um so i have an instagram um it's uh jw mundell m-u-n-d-e-l-l -L. Mm -hmm. i will uh share his instagram for you guys who are watching cool so um, some really cool stuff that you guys can see right through here. I want to scroll down a little to one of my favorite workstations that I got to see. see. You can kind of see a little. It's oh, so yeah. much cooler to see all of this in person, but it was. Oh, it's super cool. Yeah. Some videos don't really do it justice. Um, this one is actually for uh, Ryan Taylor. He's out of Houston. And. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a lot of the color mix that I kind of used with the uh, with the Best of Day Award. Actually, I think I used some copper in that one, not the gold. But uh, I, I engraved his logo on it, just hand engraved it, basically laid a stencil, and, um, and that thing came out sweet. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's I was beautiful. really happy with it. Um, so, but yeah, I have that. And then just, just my Facebook, um, Jason Mundale. Um, I had a work yeah. page for a while, but I, I'm not real big on it. Um, I don't think it's as personal as it should be. Um, I've, I've checked out other people's pages and stuff, and there's so many social media platforms that it's freaking crazy and hard for me to keep up with. But uh, I, I'm working on hopefully having a website and hopefully having some of them available. And uh, I mean, any custom orders that you guys want to do, hit me up, I yep. mean, just shoot me a direct message. And uh, I'd be more than happy to sit down and have a consultation, pricing, um, anything like that. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ganjuana in the chat room says, I just followed his Instagram. Wow. Nice work, man. Oh, thank yeah. you. Brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. Also say hello, Gabe, Lauren, and Jake. Hey, uh, Godzwana. And then lastly, luckily I subbed over here because Fireside isn't up. But it, but that looks like it's posted on the Fireside uh, <laughs> on the Fireside YouTube though. So but, I don't know. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna um, send him on his way. He's got a lot of nice to meet you. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Great for to meet you. Beautiful you. work. Thank you for having me on. Yes. Uh, thank you. It's good to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Congratulations. Thanks. Those are great pieces. Nice the rest of the weekend and be safe. Yeah. All right, thank you. Again, I'm Later. sure I'll see you again.
Yeah, guys, the last one that I showed was actually in the shape of Texas for Alonso Gonzalez. Super yeah. He rolls smooth, uh, super, super cool. Yeah, I love those. I love those epoxy pours. I look at that stuff a lot. It's like, it's kind of uh, mesmerizing to watch those pours on Instagram or on whatever. Uh, people have these like live edge kinds of boards, you know, like like just slabs of wood that are live edge and they pour that epoxy with all the like color mixed inside of it. And uh, it's like, it kind of like puts me in a trance to watch those, <laughs> watch those pours happen. Super cool. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so shall we uh, run the intro and then on the and come yeah. back and talk about our topic? Yeah, definitely. Wow, that right. was that was our pre-intro. <laughs> that was our pre-intro. Okay, <laughs> oh I'm going God. to be uh, sharing the screen here if everyone wants to uh, silence themselves. Um, one more, wait, I want to share my I want to share a screen here. Now, now we're we're changing shit up a little bit. So and, and the audio. <laughs> share audio. Optimize for video clip. Here we go. shit this is definitely not oh you guys click yourselves back now <laughs> okay Sorry. it's okay we'll get this mixing down eventually with the right proper software well welcome officially to the show right yeah that was a hell of an intro that, that was <laughs> that was great i mean that, yeah not not the not the not that intro you just rolled we've seen that a few times but i was talking about the the whole thing from the tattoo convention that's an awesome uh uh that's awesome to see again in real in real life that people are actually sitting behind booths and doing tattoos and winning awards. It's been yeah, too when long. I spoke, when uh, Ricardo and I spoke to Yalzi this morning, he said he had some really good pointers about just um, being conscious, uh, you know, and taking a step back. And he said that that was one of the biggest things that he was able to do was just slow down, find out what um, those stressors are and really just eliminate them from his life. So um, yeah. definitely it's been a, a really interesting show. The vibes are great. Everybody's, um, you know, everyone's excited to be here. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, what's our uh, what's our order of operations uh, this week, uh, Lauren? I guess that was your. Um, you've already yeah. kind of gone through all of yours. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. Since uh, Gabe, since yours is going to pull kind of right off of what uh, what my topic was going to be, um, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and start. Let me yeah. um, let me kick it off though with uh, I'll do a little a quick screen share. We have. Um, the next episode that is coming up in our uh, in the world of Fireside is uh, is going to be either this Wednesday or next. I'm not exactly sure. We had a couple of technical issues, not on our end, but on our guests end. Uh, but it was with um, I had done a little teaser last week with uh, Cooper. The superstition is what, what Cooper goes by on Instagram, and I met Cooper at Guru Tattoo. Oh, maybe two or three years ago. And he really does some beautiful, large scale kind of illustrative work, super, super clean. Uh, and um, uh, and I wanted to uh, I wanted to sit down with him and have him be a part of this illustrative tattoo series that we've been doing. We're basically just kind of teasing out the um, uh, the processes of, of illustrative style tattooers and really just talking about what illustrative tattooing actually is. And it's funny. It's like. I had an idea of what I thought it was. And then as I talked to what I think are illustrative tattooers, they have different ideas on what, what illustrative entails. So let me see if I can do uh, any better than Gabe. Unlikely that I will. But I'm going to try to pull this, uh, pull this quick little clip up and see if we can, uh, see if we can play something. Uh-oh. Somebody start talking. Let me find this clip that I just lost. Here we go. Found it. All right. Now I just need to share the screen.
Am I sharing a screen or no? Yes, you are. You just started. Are you seeing a blank screen or are you seeing a screen that has stuff on it? Oh, it has stuff on it. You're moving it around. Uh, Chris is moving. Perfect. No sound, though. Hmm. Sorry, when you click the uh, share the uh, screen there, you, there's an option to share sound and oh, optimize okay. for video. My... Uh... My uh, screen is so tiny up here, I can't see anything. All right, let's see if I did that. I'm using a little monitor for, uh, up here instead of my regular laptop screen. It's so tiny. Let's see if this is any better. And, uh, you know, very few people in the end, long term, are super happy with it and want to be there. And the main way to get away from that is by not getting that little stain in your brain to begin with, you know? You want to uh, try to do your other stuff first and then use reference as a way to sort of grade your own test, to look at it and be like, oh, is this is this a coyote? Well, you know, it looks a little more like a wolf or a bear or a badger in the sketch. I didn't realize until I see the real thing. Now I can use this to make corrections and make sure that, again, going back to the word character, it's probably the biggest key word you could really pull out of the whole thing uh, and really focus on getting the character of that right and making sure that that, you know, also has life and expression and movement and, uh, you know, using the chance to get reference also find that so again if there's a coyote it's like oh well it makes a coyote really exciting maybe the way he springs when he finds a mouse or you know he does some like little things rather than the, the really textbook if especially if we go directly to reference you find the textbook oh three quarter turn face that's it we're just going to draw it that way or whatever right. um which again ultimately is fine but most of the time those get a little repetitive and sometimes boring and it's not helping you grow and it's also not helping get you closer to Again, squeezing the last little bit of toothpaste out of that tube. So uh, to put some of some of that in context, let's see. Stop sharing my screen here. Are we back? You're good. All right. Uh, so to put some of that in um, in context, we were talking about how to use reference uh, as an illustrative tattooer. Uh, not obviously not we're, talk, we're not talking about realism or anything where people really need a literal translation but uh and, and i was asking coop if he looks at reference before he starts drawing or if he draws what he wants like the basic layout of what he wants and then tries to find reference to to use after he's kind of laid it out uh, which is what i try to do i try not to depend on reference I, I i think i know basically what the stuff i'm drawing looks like and so i lay out the basic shapes of the stuff in the perspective that i want to to have it and once my composition is built then i go and try to find reference and make uh, corrections and that was kind of what what coop was talking about you know like you know you're trying to draw a coyote and so you draw a basic idea of what you think a coyote is and then you look at the coyote and you go like oh yeah actually coyotes have ears more like this than like that or their snout their muzzles a little more narrow and i had it a little too wider or whatever it is but but rather than looking at the reference on the front end and i think that's i think that's pretty common with a lot of the high level illustrative tattooers that i've been talking to through this series is that they um they don't depend too heavily on reference uh they 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 lay out their ideas first and then find their reference to influence uh the composition that they've already built so i'd like ricardo since we have an extra tattooer on the show today i'd like to get your thoughts on that too i don't think that he was uh oh around. he couldn't hear any of that all right the last bit I, I did listen to what the gentleman was talking about with uh prioritizing ideas um setting a story for illustrative tattooing i think that's essential especially when it comes to that style of like tattooing um, it's really cool to be able to pick up on a narrative you know what i mean like yeah, with yeah. just visual aid so i think that um that's one of the cleaner styles that you can do that with for sure yeah yeah what um so, so you didn't hear that the what i was just talking about with um the how to use reference or how he uses reference how he uses just... reference or how would i use my reference they... uh well yeah what i was saying with with coop and with a lot of these folks uh, and myself included is that we'll tend to try to draw out um our idea of the composition the basic shapes and layout of what of what the thing is and then go and find our reference rather than finding reference and then drawing from the reference. I think that's the most, I think that's the biggest advantage you could have uh, is being able to think of shapes and prioritize the shapes, the importance of the size of the elements and everything like that. I think that that's one of the biggest things when it comes to line weight, when it comes to you know, field depth and everything like that. And I also think that it's really important to uh, help set the tone, like the tone and the mood of the piece itself. 
So yeah, I think it is important for you to be able to think in shapes, prioritizing the placement. And uh, that also helps with like just the, uh, the composition, the layout of the body part and stuff like that too. You know? uh, what part is gonna be the most in focus? What part's gonna be set back towards the background? I think that that should be spoken of and thought about first before you do any kind of reference off of Google or books or anything like that, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on the same page. I think it's easy to become a slave to your reference uh, and your reference will end up dictating the tattoo rather than you dictating the tattoo, so. Uh. Well, cool, uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna let that, uh, so that episode, uh, uh, so Cooper, um, yeah, thanks, Ricardo. So Cooper wanted to, uh, he wanted to record an HD kind of uh, on his end. He just got a new camera set up. And so we did the Zoom call, but we're not going to put out that footage that I just showed. That's a 360p Zoom call. He wanted to send the high quality footage and us put together like a nice 4K, not that it matters on YouTube, but it was just something fun we both wanted to do. So he's literally- it matters. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So he's, he, he's, he's literally mailing me uh, an SD card. So whenever that gets here, we'll edit it and put it out. I doubt it'll be this Wednesday. It may end up being next Wednesday, but stay tuned for it. If you're on the fireside mailing list, you'll, you'll find out when it is. If, if I do happen to get that card in the mail, you know, tomorrow or so, I'll try to get it uh, clipped together and ready for this Wednesday. Otherwise it will be next week. The, the other um, topic that I wanted to hit on hey, actually was, before you get uh -huh. started, I think that we will probably uh, go ahead and get close up while we're, we're the last week standing here. And um, okay. actually I could probably show you real quick. Yeah, okay. yeah. And across from us, which is really cool. So everybody's closing up now. Yeah, man. Um, actually that's Ethan right over there. There. Nice, looks like a nice space. It does look new. Yeah, it's a, they just put a multi-million dollars into the renovations and additions made here. And right in front of us, you can see George and his wife right over there. They had a fantastic weekend, incredible work ethic on them. They work as a team. You know, a lot of, a lot of times you'll see uh, situations where a wife and a husband will work as a team, but not maybe just at home. And this is yeah. totally different. I was just ecstatic to see that type of camaraderie and just, you know, hand in hand helpfulness. It was, it was really, it was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. One thing that looks nice about and, and unique about that building is that it looks like you can actually tattoo in there. It's pretty well lit. Was it, could you Very see well. okay, Ricardo? Yeah. Good. yeah there's my artist right now, Cody Hennings. He is a beast. Awesome. So again, you guys can find him at Cody Hennings Tattoo. Awesome. So you guys are going to, you're going to close up and leave it with, uh, with Gabe and me, or are you? Is that the plan? Yeah, we, might, we might end up doing that, guys. I can definitely hop back on. Um, but they have uh, some of their guys just uh, stomping their feet, but ready for us to sweeping you out the door. I know that. Awesome. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> thanks, yeah. for, thanks for thanks for beaming in. It's awesome to get uh, live convention coverage. Yeah, yeah. If anybody has any questions or anything like that, feel free to send us a message or a DM. Either one of us. Um, but check out the Tattoo Collectors Expo for next year. They just announced the dates: August twelfth to fourteenth. Cool. Well, awesome. Well, thanks for thanks for doing that. Good to see you, Ricardo. It's been a few weeks. Good to see you too, man. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the question, and I appreciate it, dude. Thank you. Here, yeah, I man. actually do want to leave you with one more thing, and it's a banner question, guys. Ricardo actually hand painted his banner. Um, uh, you don't see that often. I want to show it off. I'm not sure how it'll look here, but what is your opinion on creating a banner? Oh, I remember when you were laying this out, Ricardo. I remember the I remember the rough. Uh, rough kind of layout of it. Really nice. I love it. Yeah, it's sick. I love it. I um, I love hand painted banners, and you, I know you don't see it very often anymore. But when I started going to conventions, that's all you saw was hand painted banners. But uh, you you don't see them that often anymore. It's really nice. Fun. I had a blast doing it. Uh, it's still not finished, and I've been spending a lot of time uh, doing some behind the scenes work and stuff like that. So. If we get a chance to, it'll get a get to it and we'll uh, tighten it up a little bit more. And it's fun though, man. It's fun having it. It's fun carrying it around. Uh, it hasn't cracked or anything like that on me. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah, like, you painted it, you painted it in oil. Is that right? Oils. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. yeah did, did you use a lot of medium or anything in it or did you use just a lot of straight paint or what? Uh, like glaze or anything like that? I'm going to, that's the next step is the glazing process. Um, I glazed a little bit of it here and there just to kind of speed up some of the, some of the uh, drying time. And that was the medium, the gal kit medium that I used. Uh, and then, um, but I haven't used too many linseed oil or anything like that on it yet. So I will. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. 
Well, it sounds okay. like they're they sounds like they're mad at you guys. Yeah, they're a little mad at us, but they're, they're throwing chairs. I'm pretty sure something's going to crash into the uh, into the set pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we had a great weekend. Thank you to everybody who watched thus far. Uh, again, um, you'll see us next week on Captain Weekly. Awesome. Safe oh, travels. Ciao. Safe travels back home. Thank you. Yeah. All so right. Jake, what's uh, you hit your next clip? You you want to end with the uh, the simple one, right? Or well, that's 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 really all I have. I wanted to talk about, and and then I, that will lead, I think, into your clips. But I wanted to talk about, uh, and I forget exactly what happened. I know I I uh, what happened that, that put this in my head. I I talk a lot to tattooers, uh, but I don't talk a lot to people who just enjoy tattoos and want to get tattooed, and. Mm -hmm. Something popped in my, uh, I, I say I say that. I talk a lot to my own clients, but on the air, on, through Fireside, it's mostly, all of my stuff is focused on tattooers and not a lot on sure. tattoo collectors. And, and I'd like to change that. I'd at least like to, to have, you know, something that I can share with all, all the years of my, the ideas that I've, that I've gathered over the years that, that I think would be valuable to clients. And one thing is the idea of what a simple tattoo is. And I, I hear a lot, you know, clients will say like, well, you could probably knock this out in no time. It's just a, a few, a few words, or it's sure. just, it's all lines, you know, it's just, it's yeah. just on my wrist and it's all just a circle. Here. It's just a circle. Yeah. Things like that. And so, um, so I, I thought we might talk a little bit about just because the tattoo is simple, doesn't make it easy. And in fact, probably makes it far more difficult than a complex tattoo. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hide everything that you need to hide. Every mistake in my tattoos can be covered up and hidden. Uh, and no one ever knows that they happened, you know, because yeah. of the, because of the style of tattooing. Uh, and, and so I, I, I thought maybe uh, you might have some ideas on it. And then, it, and then it just so happened that you had the, it, it, it was, it, yeah, it was awesome. I was like, Oh wait, we, I just talked about that with, uh, with Hunter. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'd seen another uh, uh, thing online somewhere where somebody was talking about a client who's complaining that, uh, you know, the well, minimum is $150, but it's just a circle. And okay. the, uh, the reply not the, you know, one of the replies on the threads was, and usually this is like the wild west of the fucking, you know, Facebook tattoo forums. But uh, someone was like, well, you know what I do is I give them a pen and I say, draw a circle. And then I tell them to draw another one that's actually a circle. And then I tell them, look, I only have one chance to do it and it's got to be as perfect as it could be. It's going to cost you 150 bucks. And they're like, here you go, take my money. Right. You know, like those, those simple tattoos and I'll run the clip. I've got a clip. I, I don't know if I hit the exact spot with, um, for the conversation, but it's a pretty good one about it. And, uh, and Hunter is, you know, he's been tattooed. He's like a, and it was funny. I, I called him like a real tattooer. I talked to tattooers all fuck, like you. I talked to tattooers every day, all day. And, uh, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm talking to a traditional tattooer, like a real tattooer. <laughs> and, uh, but it's real because like, it might just be Roman numerals, but if you, you can't like, you let, to your point with the realism, you can't like shade it out or, you know, like if that line is fucked up, it's fucked up. You know, if, if that one little, if that little curve doesn't actually curve or if it goes wonky a little bit, like you can't fix that. Mm -hmm. And um, whereas you can now have a, a whole, almost a whole generation of tattooers or at least a whole school of tattooers, you know, who, who actually can't even really line very well, although they could do pretty awesome tattoos. Um, but to your point, the, the, some of those simplest tattoos are the ones that actually take the most amount of, of uh, Skill, pre precision. Um, precision, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, the, the, the funny thing uh, is, is, you know, the clients assume that they know what is, uh, and I don't mean it to, to slight the client. I, I, I understand that, that mindset. I would think the same thing. But the clients think that it's simple. And so they're willing to let the least experienced tattooer do it to get the best deal on it. And unfortunately, those are the types of tattoos that the least experienced tattooers really should, you know, should, shouldn't be doing. Um, I can remember starting and thinking like, well, at the very least, you know, when I started, it was in the 90s. And so there was a lot of tribal, a lot of armbands, a lot of barbed wire. And yeah. I thought as someone who could draw pictures, I thought, well, I could at least do that stuff while I learn. That's easy. You know, I could at least do tribal <laughs> stuff while I learn. And of course, I learned the hard way that you can't, you know, uh, kanji, ch you know, ch Chinese yeah. characters on the neck or whatever. That was really popular. Yeah. And uh, it was, it's such a, uh, it's it, it, technically, it's such a challenge to do those things, no matter your skill level, even, uh, even to this day, if I have to do a, if I have to line a, 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 a tattoo, a sleeve that depends on some really precise line work, I don't set it up for my first day of the week. Tuesday is my first tattoo a day of the week. I'll set, I'll schedule that for Thursday after I've got a couple of days under my belt. I don't want to take four days off and then come in and try to line something really 
technical and that's after 25 years you know sure you know i um there was one one time where i was working with uh, one of the apprentices at the shop that i own and i have a, a tendency sometimes to get great ideas i'm like oh you know what would be great is if, if this apprentice had to do his like 10th tattoo on stage at the paradise tattoo gathering with guy ages and giving him advice i mean he'd have guy ages and giving him advice right how, how how wonky could that be and um like a half hour before the event at Paradise, then all of a sudden we're at Paradise, right? And all of a sudden we're at the tattoo convention and there's a lot of people milling about and everyone's like, oh, we're going to watch a tattoo apprentice do a tattoo next to Guy H. So that's going to be crazy to watch. And all of a sudden the place is filling up and there's like 75 people in the room. And, you know, the, the, the guy was getting kind of nervous, you know? Sure. And I was like, oh, wow, this is actually a little bit heavier, you know, it's just, you know, and uh, all of a sudden, I, there must have been 150 people in the room, right? And, the, and my, my buddy, or my buddy at the time, he starts to, uh, to do the tattoo and he's shaking like a motherfucker, right? <laughs> so this is, and this is kind of the point, like it's, you know, uh, a guy was like amazing. He was like, and I was like, oh my God, we may, maybe I went too far. Maybe we, this is too much. Like this guy, if he gets through this, he can get through anything. This is intense. He's got 150 people watching him and, uh, and he can't, and his fucking hands are shaking like a fucking crazy. And guy goes, I mean, this must have been within the first, like, you know, 20 seconds. The, 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 guy, the client was a tattooer, so it was, it was, a, a, it was his mentor, I think, in fact. Um, so it was all good. But um, guy was like, maybe you should take the roll of paper towels and put it under your arm so that you have a little bit of weight there so that your arm doesn't shake so much. And maybe you don't start with the lines. Oh, this is what brought it up. This is what brought it up. But you're yeah, like, maybe you yeah. don't start with the lines. Maybe you should do some shading first, get the hang of what's going on and do the lines after. And, you know, all of a sudden, yeah, you know, yeah. just, and it was also amazing just having that little bit of guidance right mm -hmm. there in the spot, all of a sudden made, um, you know, the tattooer feel so much uh, more better. And, you know, and again, it, it was up until that point, I wasn't sure. I'm like, oh, fuck, we might have fucked this up. I might like, like, this might be too much. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that guy is not going to be able to crack under any, there's no tattoo pressure that anybody could put him under. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was really like into the frying pan right Ooh. there. But, well, okay, let's, well, let me, uh, let me yeah, fire up this clip. clip. Yeah. So this is uh, with Hunter and he is what uh, I would consider a real tattooer. Evidently. <laughs> I said it, I said it without even thinking. So it's, it must be my, my truth. Um, <laughs> One of the beauties of it for me feels like is, you know, because you're tattooing inside of somebody on somebody, you know, there's a, a desire or, or a responsibility to try to do it as perfect as you possibly can, sure. but it's skin. It's not going to be perfect. It can't be perfect. And you're a human being. So like the tattooer is not perfect. The client's not perfect. Uh, you know, it's, it needs to be done like pretty much perfect the first time. So you're like, you're, there's this strive or desire to be perfect in a medium that is inherently imperfect. So it's, it's just crazy. You'd almost have to be fucking out of your mind to be a tattooer. Um, I, I think that a lot, you know, I think a lot of years though, too, um, not to say I'm too hard on myself because I, I'm still pretty hard on myself, you know, I mean, like if it's a bigger piece and has something going to it, it's, you know, I like it. I look at the photos afterwards. I don't like it so much. And then I see that photo after six months of not looking at it going, Oh, I, I do a pretty decent tattoo. <laughs> sure. Um, Absolutely. Like, like critique and self critique. And, you know, again, you guys, everyone does such great work, but if you weren't critiquing it like that yourself, then you wouldn't be improving. Yeah. You know, I guess I just, I, I don't want to think too much of myself and, and, you know, you said it, I mean, it, in the years that I've been doing it at this point and what people achieve on skin blows my mind continuously. You know, when people ask what type of stuff that I do, I just tell them I do tattoos that look like tattoos. Sure. You know, if somebody wants, you know, hyper black and gray, like realism, I'm not your guy. Sure. You know, um, what, what, I, did I, 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 what did I say? I called you a real tattooer. You know, I'm like, I, I spend all day long talking to tattooers, you know, and, and a variety of traditional tattooers, too. But oh, that's my that's that's what I want to say. I'm like, he's a real he's a real fucking tattooer. You know, not that anybody else isn't a real tattooer. But. No, no. And I, you know, in the the, the 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 teaser that you put up when you said that, because that's I mean, I think for a lot of years to not say I struggled with, but the idea of you know wanting to develop whether you want to call it style or whatnot. Because I mean, I think I just even in doing traditional artwork, you know, I just 
mimic the old guys, you know, people that I look up to. Um, and uh, so I don't know if there's much of a style, but there was definitely a point that I came around to the idea that, you know, I, 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 if, if I can do it, I'm more than happy to take the time to do it. So when, you know, you brought up Roman numerals and they are pretty common, you know, technically tricky to do. If you're trying to get, you know, the thicks and thins with the small serifs and stuff. And usually people want them pretty small. It's really gratifying nailing something like that. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people can't. And not to say a lot of people can't, but when you're dealing with a larger piece that you know you're going to shade and color, I'm not saying, I mean, I honestly think, you know, you should always pay attention and try to do, strive to do the cleanest line work you can. I always associate that with like building a house. The house should have a great frame. The um, one of my favorite parts about Hunter is also the uh, the experience that he's uh, deliberate about delivering, and uh, you know, so we got to talk a lot about how you know at this point in his career, you know, he does everything that walks in the door. He's happy. He delivers an experience. You know, they all appreciate it, and um, you know, and really the you know the, one of the worst things that happens is you know you some see an awesome tattoo and you're like oh that's an awesome tattoo who did it and they're like ah oh, so and so they're you know, kind of an asshole and um right. you know uh, it, sometimes it's after you're like 15 or something that you know often tattoo not, sometimes people get it right out of the gate sometimes some tattooers never get it but i found often after 10 15 years there's a, a set of tattooers that are like fuck it you know what i'm just going to do the best tattoo i can and if, you know they want faith upside down on the wrist and that's what is happening right now, then go sit down, have a good time. You know, if you ever want to come back for another tattoo, you know where to come, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was fun to catch up with Hunter. And then um, the, well, let's see. So what else? The uh, where, where is Hunter? I, I know you told me before, but where is Hunter? Hunter it's in the uh, Baltimore Tattoo Museum. Oh, okay. Huh. So I'm hoping to, uh, to get another tour of, uh, of the Tattoo Museum there. Maybe we could beam in straight to it. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe it opened up uh, within the last year uh, through the uh, pandemic, or, or at least that's when when Hunter moved there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that I mean, that, the tattoos you were just rolling through doing that during that interview, I think, speak perfectly to, to what we're talking about. You know, the the um, those types of tattoos depend on everything being, you know, flawless. The lines have to be yeah. clean. The color has to, re and and you know, sometimes when the tattoo is fresh, you can get away with you know with, with uh, the photo makes it look like it's cleaner than it is but you know a month later six months later or a year you can you can really tell where what was rushed what what yeah. and and a lot of people would say like well that's a simple tattoo but just because it's simple doesn't make it at all easy and and so i would urge anyone who's not a tattooer or uh, who's who's looking to get a simple tattoo to 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 uh, do their research just like they were getting a back piece and make sure that you choose the most skilled person you know, that you, that you possibly can. It, you know, and not, and not that I want to encourage uh, clients to hyper, hyper process stuff they may or may not understand, but like definitely with like tattooers. And when you're talking about, you know, how to, how to do that, like just paying attention to like point your tips and like don't fucking line over the line or and shade up to the line or not, you know, or, you know, like just, just the, the extra care that the tattooer will take to make sure that all those things, like the T's are, crossed and the eyes are dotted like mm -hmm. you know that's really what the difference is is like when people are talking about rushing through tattoos or how they do it fast it's like you know you may rush through it but like somebody that takes 20 percent longer might actually poke all of the holes that are needed to be poked mm -hmm. you know and uh, anyways it's uh it's definitely something that, you know on the other hand you know i look at all my tattoos i'm like wait a minute that's a little far, you know you know that, that doesn't look right Some, sometimes that is just the way that it rolls you know but um yeah, you know, like I said, there, you can tell when a tattooer like doesn't do all of those things compared, or you know, if you're paying, if you're really paying attention. Yeah, um, there's a say. I was listening to an audio book, uh, a Ryan Holiday audio book recently, and um, he was talking. He was quoting uh, a shoot, like a skeet shooting or target shooting uh -huh. coach or something like that, and he and and the saying was. Um, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And I thought, wow, that really applies to tattooing. Uh, it's not a tattoo saying at all, but it easily could be. Yeah, yeah, that's great, I like that. Yeah. Um, awesome, okay, so uh, sticking with uh, the illustration theme, what I've got next is 
a clip from a Carrie Barbara Guy Aitchison interview where Guy was asking her about kind of like not, not like the, the using different elements and you know Carrie's obviously done illustration and done realism and has mixed the two and so uh, I was pretty psyched uh, it was always great to uh, revisit Carrie's interviews yeah, absolutely. and uh, on the tail end of this if I remember I'll, we'll get to talk about well we should because it's for BYOB too um, I think we're going to be meant to outer limits, but um, okay, here we go. Awesome. We definitely need to talk about that. All right. I'd like to hear a little bit about your philosophy on, uh, I guess that the graphic approach here, like the difference between realism and something more graphic is beyond just outlines. We're trying to optimize these, these pictures so that they're, they're going to make strong tattoos. So, I was, I was just hoping that you could get into this distinction between realism and what you're actually doing. So, you know, it's, it's controversial, right? Because we have so many different styles. But if, if we look at, for instance, now I'm doing more realism than anything these days. Uh, people just ask me for it. So I've been drawn to that. Like you say, the clients kind of dictate what, what we want to do. And I like that. So how do I take realism and try to open it up and create a good contrast so that the piece, even if it doesn't have outlines, is framed up somehow. So if I'm doing a, a let's just say a face, or let's use a sculpture face, for instance, and I'm doing something like that, I wanna make sure that it shifts regularly from black to skin and then has some midtones, right? So that things, pop out next to each other and don't all fuzz together over time. So if I'm not using a strong outline, then I'm gonna to try to create some solid black areas that hold the lighter areas together, basically stop it. So in my early years, for instance, white, I used to use white to keep the color of the black in place, you know? So if I had a place that was kind of tight, I would get in there with some white or a light tone to hold the darker tones as it, the tattoo wanted to spread, I would, it would hold them back, basically. They don't blend into each other as much if you have another color right there to stop it. It's very interesting how it works, but I kind of realized that early in my career that if I, in, for instance, put white in the eyes, the eyes wouldn't close up. You know, they would, they would hold where they were supposed to be. So, and sometimes doing line work or some lines and line weights, so like different line weights was always really fun, doing some thinner lines, some thicker lines, kind of a brush stroke kind of feel to the lines, thicker lines to pull some stuff forward and either softer lines or even colored lines behind to knock things back, you know, so that parts would look more towards you and other things would kind of drop back into the distance. You know, you know rooting you the in the pictures back. Now? Oh yes, please. Now that you're back, we're looking at uh, there's a samurai back piece. Uh, th this is a. Uh, it's hard to believe that this was done right around the time I started tattooing, um, because 1988. There really wasn't much around that was this innovative, at the time. Uh, yeah, there were some. Was, this was quite interesting. It was fun. Um, how can I, he wanted his own portrait on the pants. I don't know if you can see that. Way uh, yeah, down I in the see bottom. that down there. On the left yeah. side, yeah. So that's kind of a caricature or sim similarity of his own face on the pattern of his clothes. And I thought, boy, you can do so much detail just in the patterns themselves, you know? The, um, yeah. So uh, I'm pretty excited. The Carrie uh, or Carrie, sorry. So when we were out there doing um, an interview with Carrie last year for the uh, Golden State, or maybe it was two years ago, we were uh, lucky enough to do a little tour of the museum. And there actually is a video up of it somewhere on the Tattoo Now channel with um, Jenny does an awesome uh, little 20 minute tour. But for the BYOB, there's uh, two hours, I believe, on a Sunday where we will be beaming in and uh, with either Matt, with, I don't know if Carrie's going to be there. Uh, it'll okay. be either with Jenny or with Matt, the, the manager, and we'll do a tour of the museum. And then they have traditional artists uh, there, of course. And so we'll sit down and maybe maybe we'll do like a half hour tour 
but then we'll uh, we'll do a drawing session with uh, uh, them from out there. We'll so we'll beam it out from California to the stage at Jimmy Peak in Massachusetts. Oh man, that's super cool. And it's, it's just absolutely mind blowing to look at that tattoo and think that that was done in 1988. 1988. It's like, God, jaw draw. I mean, it, it, that's a that's an incredible layout and, and, and tattoo for, for today. It looks like something that, you know, using that big open yeah. kind of yellow at the bottom and all of the, and all of the detail and pattern based stuff uh, at the top, just the big shapes working so well. It's um, yeah. what a, what a, what a pioneer. I've never met her, but um, I've always been a, a big fan of her, of her work. Oh yeah. yeah. You should definitely uh, shoot an email. You should get her on the show at some yeah. point. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. We well, did, I got um, a pretty sick interview with her out when I was there. So there's another interview kicking around where, um, we chatted with her live yeah yeah fantastic um yeah let's uh before we wrap up because i know we're a little bit it's already uh we're, we're an hour in now uh what um just for anyone who doesn't know we've, we've talked about the by byob a little bit and it's the uh, for people who have been around tattooing for a little while the paradise tattoo gathering is one of the real kind of uh art focused live events one of the first real art focused live events in, in tattooing and it started what was the first year so that the was in uh 2000, 2008 was the first year of the paradise tattoo gathering and yeah it was kind of weird the first um event i decided to throw was going to be a convention i never really even threw any parties or anything it was like let's just go straight for a four-day tattoo convention in the middle of nowhere yeah um Right. But, you know, my, my wife uh, is an infant teacher. She's uh, she, she gets the human brains when they're really just forming. I mean, they've already been forming for nine months, well, six months or whatever. But, um, you know, a lot of what she does is creates environments that interact with the way that the brains are, you know, uh, coming online at this at that point. Right. But so anyways, point being is there's a lot of education um, from from her side and into my brain. I, I, like, I, I didn't go to college or I mean, I kind of dropped out of college a couple of times, but um Point being is with her influence, I was like, ah, education is kind of, you know, one of the main focuses of it's the best return on investment is what it is. Sure, and yeah. so if you're investing your money or your time, you know, the best thing that you could do is invest it in education. And, you know, and again, with infants is actually the, the highest return on investment that you could have. So like as a for me, as like the poor white trash kind of businessy guy, I'm like, how do I turn two dimes and you know into a quarter, and how do I turn a quarter into a, a dollar and a dollar? And it's yeah. by teaching people, right? Or, and in my case, because I don't, well, I teach some things, but I'm better at creating environments where yeah. people can come and teach and, and to learn. So yeah. So anyways, the answer to your question is 2008. 2008. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so so yeah. To your point, the the idea of of paradise was to really immerse tattooers into uh, a, a you know a, a beautiful environment with with a lot of art going on around them that they could participate in that wasn't just tattooing but was uh, a lot of different styles of visual art that, that hopefully they were able to pull back into their tattooing and 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 it happened how many times first one was in 08 well, and how many were there the, the first one was in uh, 2008 and um that was a tattoo convention with some art it was again that was with a real focus on the education and then um you know, I was really hoping to to see if Guy was going to be able to make it that first year. He's obviously been a, an inspiration uh, for a very long time, and um, the very first year he almost came because a lot of a lot of his friends and like Michelle wrote an email like a week before the convention, mm -hmm. and she was like, "Ah, we would like to make it, but you know, not this year, maybe next year." And I was like, "Okay, we're going to make this so awesome that you're definitely coming next year." And so then we did, or I did, we did, you know, we did, it. and then, um, but that was the second year was crazy, 2009, because Guy was coming the first year, and Bob Tyrell was coming, Sean Barber was coming, and um, it was definitely very heavy. It was, and it was like the first convention happened, and we were rolling right into the second convention, more energy, and um, but uh, you know, it, it also that that also involved a little bit of uh, drinking a little too much that year to try to deal <laughs> yeah. with. But that was not the appropriate way. To, to deal with the stress and then all of a sudden so by the time we got to the convention it was like there's no fucking way i'm doing another convention again ever oh really no, no way because no. it was you know and guy was everyone had a great time but um it was like it was very clear that you know i was taking a year or two off and frankly i think i might have even gotten divorced if i was going to do another tattoo convention like <laughs> oh, really? i was not in the proper mindset to continue to do so and um yeah then but it was awesome michelle was you know basically like, this has to keep happening and uh talked Michelle with Ortman, Michelle Ortman. Yep. Mm -hmm. and uh she talked with uh kim a little bit was like we could, maybe we could do an art retreat where instead of uh tattooing 
you know, we could do painting. And, you know, Kim was like, okay, you know, we don't, you know, wants to make stuff happen. You know, you know, hey, you talk to Gabe, make sure he fucking gets his shit together and then maybe we can do something. Yeah. But I, you know, I was basically like, yeah, you know, I wasn't going to say no to that. I was like, okay, sure. But I went along begrudgingly, you know, it wasn't, it definitely was not my idea to be like, hey, let's do an art retreat. It was definitely like Michelle and guys. And, guys thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, well, you know, they, they like the idea and they like the, the venue. And so two, two months leading up to the art retreat, so that was 2010 was the first art retreat was no tattooing, just painting. And uh, I kind of got what was going on. And then it was the best event, one of the best events, the art retreats, you know, it has all the inspiration and the education and the learning of the tattoo gathering. Um, but without the actual, I mean, without the tattooing and tattoo, I love tattoos. I love tattooing. I love clients. I love the whole aspect of it, the life changing aspects of it, but it's also very stressful and high stakes well, you know, and, and all of that. So to, to take that away, um, basically the artists, are, to, to, to wrap this up, the tattooers who have the courage to go to an event that doesn't have tattooing and just is about inspiration and art creation, you know, really, truly get the experience that they deserve. And, and you know, yeah, yeah and, there we go. And that's what we're, and so fast forward to 2021, this October, mm. that's what we're hoping to, wow. hoping to do. We, we uh, went through like roller coasters and explosions <laughs> and well, we're getting back together. Yeah. 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 So uh, th this is a kind of dipping your toe back in. This is a, a, a smaller version of that event. And because of all the stuff with COVID, we'll have, yeah. we'll do it live. And, and Fireside's participating this time. I'll be teaching a seminar, a ton of other folks. If you go to paradisebyob.com, you'll see who all is, um, who all is presenting, what all is happening. And we would love for people to actually show up in person. But if you're nervous yeah. about getting on a plane, nervous about being around people, although this will be a smaller convention, a lot yeah. of it outdoors, uh, the band uh, that's playing is uh, uh, Va Vapors of Morphine. Uh, I've listened to some of them; they sound oh, great. But so if sick. People, yeah, if people are nervous about coming, all of it will be streamed uh, digitally, and you could buy a digital ticket as well. And what I, what I, I like to say: uh, you could have uh, you, you you can take your dose of paradise however you want, live or right. virtual. Yeah. So we're we're a little bit we're a little late uh, starting to promote it because it is only about two months away, and. Um, uh, and and, people and, still buying tickets. So we got a, a whole bunch of shops, uh, bought shop you can get shop tickets. So five tickets for the price of four, it's a hundred dollars for the week start ticket. It's not a weekend ticket. It's a week start ticket. October yeah. 3rd to the 6th is a Sunday to a Wednesday. Um, yeah. and when I was so thinking it's, it's crazy, but it's Tetris days off. So, right. Yeah. It, so incredible, obviously super affordable, a uh, hundred bucks for, for, a uh, that's for the that's, stage pass. That's for the stage pass. Yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, compared to a lot of these events that are nearly a thousand dollars for four days of seminars, a lot of them, not to, not to knock anything like that. I think it's well worth a thousand dollars to sit and listen to your favorite tattooers. Oh uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have our, uh, our inspiring tours. That's $2,000. There's no, yeah. uh, I'm not, right. we don't shy away from necessarily from charging when, when appropriate, but this is the art retreat, right? And the first, as you were saying, I'm kind of like the first time getting back and it's, uh, we're in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Right. right. So like when we when we uh, booked the venue, uh, March or May or whenever it was, you know, we basically had less than 100 people in a room and everyone had to wear masks. Yeah. So, you know, we kind of had to design an event that's based uh, again, we're, we're designing an event that's in the middle of a pandemic. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, you know, health has always been at the utmost of our minds with tattooing, uh, you know, uh, me personally, like, I just don't have that many brain cells to lose. And my sugar system does not have enough blood in it to handle COVID at all. So I'm Perfect. going to yeah. stay far. You know, I don't want anything to do with it. So like to your point, you know, the resort is a mountain resort. So there's always walking around, you know, we could probably do a lot of the stuff outdoors. Hopefully the band will be outdoors, mm -hmm. you know, plain air, all the painting could, you know, lots of painting could happen outdoors. The condo, you know, everyone's kind of in separate condos. Right. Condos have porches. So yeah. Um, well, I hope I hope a lot. I hope most people are, are not scared and are willing to come out and say hi in person. I'd like to meet a lot of the folks. I don't know a lot of the reinventing the tattoo community. I know some of those folks are looking to come out. Anyone oh, yeah. that's been following Fireside for any period of time, I'd love to meet you guys. I'm doing a two day seminar um, that is I've been calling it Find Your Style, but it's really going to be about simplifying um, uh, simplifying your tattoo process and, and really limiting your options in order to get the best tattoos. A lot of times we're overwhelmed with the number of options that we have uh, in, in, our, um, uh, in our tattoo designs. We end up with uh, 
with the famous uh, analysis paralysis. And so I've got some tricks that I've developed over the years to really limit my options based on the, the challenge that's in front of me. And that's what uh, this seminar that I'm putting out is going to be about. And it'll be the first time that I've ever done it. And um, I'm, I'm preparing pretty hard for it. I'm, I'm proud of it so far. So I hope that, uh, hope that you guys will either come out and see it in person or beam in and, uh, and watch it uh, through the webs. Awesome. Um, well, let me, um, let's, let's roll, let's end this out with, uh, I got a, a three minute video rolling of uh, Christian Perez's paintings. Nice. He's going to be doing an oil painting of skulls, skull oil painting uh, workshop. At, the, at Paradise. Um, right. At Paradise. And uh, this, this video here is actually for an interview. This is like a, a, a an anticipation of uh, the Tattoo Now show. I've been doing them every Wednesdays. Not doing this Wednesday. I'm going to be uh, dropping my daughter off at college and crying for fucking hours. Uh, oh. But um, the following Wednesday, I'll be back doing interviews again. I've got uh, Fawn Baker from Tattoo Collecting Podcast, and then Thea Duskin, and then yes. Christian Perez. I think with Christian, he's uh, close enough. We're going to drive down to a Hope Gallery and do this one in person. Oh, nice. Um, All right, let's check it but, out. Uh, cool, let's check this, yeah. And you know, uh, you don't actually have to... Uh, Hide yourself because we're on Zoom screen sharing now. Okay. One tattooer and original artist or painter who's always really struck a chord is Christian Perez. Check out his work. You, well, if you're into skulls, you cannot be disappointed. Christian is an amazing tattooer, as I was saying, but he's also uh, gone out of his way to go to illustrators' master's classes with some amazing teachers, uh, Dan Dos Santos being one of them, who's a, who's a great influence. And like that, that whole thing of the illustrators' master's uh, class, the I think that Christian's taken, uh, taken it two or three times. And uh, you could just see how his artwork and and his tattoos but you know they all progress just dr dramatically by being around you know some really brilliant painters so uh, christian is going to be at the byob this fall and he's going to be doing a skull painting class in oils uh, and in anticipation of that i'll be heading down to hope gallery to do an in-person interview on uh, september 1st of course, the replay is available forever, but I plan to bring a painter down with me or a tattooer down with me. And uh, yeah, just, I mean, the, the details, the composition, you know, he's been critiqued by some of the best illustrators in the world. And he's one of those people who, one of those artists who really takes it and runs with it. He, he never seems to get offended. And um, just looking at his work product, you know, clearly it speaks for itself. So this is, yeah, September 1st. It'll be a little early, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, he will be doing a painting class at the Paradise BYOB this October. Well, the whole event's October 3rd to the 6th. And um, he'll be doing a, an oil painting workshop for, with skulls. And uh, yeah, it's always uh, very exciting to be working with such amazing talent, you know, making up all the videos and all of the, the thumbnails and stuff is very easy, you know, with artwork that's great. Anyways, Christian Perez, oil painter, check out his seminar at the Paradise BYOB and his upcoming interview on the Tattoo Now show, September 1st, 11 a.m. Eastern. This is all in 2021. If you're watching the replay, it'll be around forever. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's so so good. That work is beautiful. I, 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 yeah, I'm really excited to see his to see his process. I've never met Christian either, but I do know his work pretty well. And so his workshop is a single day. Uh, it's one day. I'm not sure what day it is. You can find it out on the uh, Paradise Byob uh, dot com website. Uh, but registrations have started. Um, he's got a pretty awesome interview up on the Chedzar podcast. So if okay. anybody's um, well, anybody that's watching this should immediately do a search for Chedzar. Christian Perez podcast. Um, yeah. yeah, they're 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 a, they're a great crew. Yeah, excited to see. There are really some some incredible uh, 
incredible artists at this at, at the BYOB. I'm, I'm excited to meet all of them and watch them work. It's just like <laughs> overwhelming the number of people who are who have committed to come down and and, and share their uh, share their brains. It, it's hard to go to sleep. I have to just uh, keep working to get all the promotion up. I got more videos to make and more interviews to book. And uh, yeah. yeah, to your point, like yeah, when I'm looking at this kind of artwork and that's uh, I mean just in general, like I said, it's a, to go from like Christian to Hunter to you know. Mm-hmm uh carry you know it's like i don't know yeah yeah it's amazing it's awesome. <laughs> thank it you is. everybody for making it happen uh yeah, and, and, the, and to the sponsors and to any future sponsors yeah yeah speaking of sponsors this is a new show but we'll uh if, if you're someone who's worked with us in the past expect to expect to get a call or an email where we'll be looking for sponsors for this show as we tighten it up and make it a real live weekly newscast show i think we get a little better each time Absolutely. I have, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tightening up my CRM skills too. So I'm working with, um, for a couple of tattoo shops, but so I'll have all of the sponsors into a sequence. So they'll uh-huh. get the, they, they cannot escape our emails or our texts soon enough, mm-hmm. unless right. they say no, you know, yeah. but they'll have yeah. to say no. <laughs> they can't avoid us. No. Right. Right. Well, cool. Well, have, have we said it all? Or are we ready? To yeah, yeah we're all good. Up? Thank you, everybody. Well, I guess let me uh, one, one more round. We'll see if anybody uh, Atomic Injunctions. Yeah, says... Ganjuana. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. Ganjuana says have a great night, everybody. Yeah, man. Thanks, Ganjuana, for, for, for chiming in each week. We really appreciate that. I know uh, working out the kinks in a new show sometimes gets a little tough to sit through, but but you've been here yeah. each week for us. We appreciate it. Yeah. It's way better than sitting through my intros in the Monday morning groups. Anyways, <laughs> speaking of, I'll talk to everybody Monday morning. Let's uh, let's All wave. Right. Ah, cheers. Bye.